or do you have ambitions of becoming Meghalaya's first woman chief minister? Never. It has never occurred to me also. Politics is also very male dominated. No man is going to allow any woman to rise to that seat. What about the perception that you are supporting a government that's mired in scams? Scams are not something new. Scams are allegations which need to be verified. Hello viewers, today we have a very interesting persona Kong Amparin Lingdo, the MLA of East Shillong constituency. She has fought elections since 2008 and has won all of them. And today we are going to look at how she is going to face 2023. Kong Amparin has also held uh, responsible positions in the government. She has been Minister for Education, Minister for Urban Affairs, Minister for Tourism, amongst others. So, Kong Amparin, which of these tenures is memorable as far as you are concerned? I would uh, think that uh, I remember the JNN URM days where for the first time yes, those the buses. city of Shillong mm -hmm. saw some substantial changes. The buses, the red buses were operationalized and then we had these stormwater drains, mm -hmm. we had widening of so many important roads all the way up to the new Shillong township. Then I think that uh, the entire land acquisition the entire it happened building, during your tenure. Yes, okay. the, the building of the new Shillong Township, which at that point of time nobody believed us that we were going to transform that part of mm -hmm. the extended uh, Shillong city. Mm -hmm. So, to me personally, those were the years and days of actual performance mm -hmm. because you could actually see on ground what was being done. Then the entire Muda debate and how we had to moot this very genuine concern to citizens at large to understand that the authority had to start becoming operational because of the restrictions um, on, on passage of traffic flow, vehicle, vehicular flow, pedestrian flow. So I think that that was to me something that um, was very fulfilling amidst all the controversies. Mm. Let me ask you one thing. As Urban Affairs Minister, once upon a time, do you think that this idea of, uh, you know, uh, sort of zoning the city into municipality and non-municipality areas is a good idea? Because as of today, uh, there are different rules for different areas of Shillong city, the larger, the greater Shillong, as we call it. And we find that there is a clash of, I don't know, a clash of vision or a clash of responsibilities, a clash of priorities. The, uh, the urban, uh, the people within Shillong municipality have proper regulated uh, garbage management systems. Those beyond don't have. And people in the, you know, beyond Shillong City don't even have any system in place. If you go even just to Smith, you'll find there's no garbage management system in place. Uh, see, we, we have to maintain uh, one, one, one very important um, reality and that is we are also under the purview of the sixth schedule okay so now the sixth schedule while operating in the entire state of meghalaya uh, would have these unavoidable demarcations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now shillong city itself went through a lot of phase changes a lot of these uh, these new systemic uh, uh, you know things that were put into play but I'm telling you one day 
These systems, once tested in Shillong city and its adjoining areas, will be replicated in other parts of this of the state. Because as well. if you look at, see, you just mentioned six scheduled areas, but if you look at the ambit of the district councils. They don't look after garbage management, solid waste management, nothing of it. So then people are left to their devices. See, now again, the recent, um, recent uh, changes in the sick schedule, the amendments to the sick schedule will now force, mm -hmm. yeah, will now force yes, yes. the district councils but who are also, now territorial councils. But it also means they will have to have uh, elected local urban or local uh, non-urban bodies, right? They will have to um, organize themselves. They will be forced by the systems to organize themselves. Because right now, in the recent amendments, there's going to be a further delimitation of the of the MTC constituencies. Mm -hmm. You're going to have smaller spaces. Okay. You're going to have smaller locations. And uh, direct funding will become a reality. Mm -hmm. And the moment direct funding is discussed and talked about in the community, there will be a conforming to the recommended norms of these local bodies. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in the visit of the Parliamentary Standing Committee, all of that was discussed. Okay. And uh, roles of women, roles of the immediate Darbar, then the debates about empowering women also to play more fundamental roles in these Darbars. Mm -hmm. Because in the unorganized local body, women anyways are the, the, the main soldiers of these darbars. Whenever there is a crisis in the community, you will see that it is the women community that are but, tasked but, with no, that. Let me remind you, last time when you were asked if you think it's time that women also become Rangbashnong or take full part in the in the affairs of the Darbarshnong as is happening in the panchayats, then you said that it's too early for a change. No, no. You need not always Look at a drastic change where a woman will become a Rambashno. But you can definitely bring in the, uh, you know, the, the changes. Not? But why not? I, I think it would be too confusing for all of us because this is a traditional time-tested system where you always have an elder as a male and where you always have women hovering around the male and giving them that necessary direction, that necessary guidance. So I still think that it would not be fair but to you know, install we, a woman uh, Rangbashong. But the, but the constitution uh, guarantees equal rights for men and women. And if women can become ministers, can become MLAs, why can't they become Rangbashong? I think that uh, that's the beauty of, 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 of codification of traditional customary practices. That's where you have your own identity. And that's where we need to safeguard that. We need not want to be completely changing 360 degree because that 360 degree change may not be desirable or may not even yield the desirable result. So there's enough debate already about the matrilineal already being a one-sided system where marriages in the state of Meghalaya, I believe, are caving in predominantly because of these role, roles of men and women in, in a family uh, unit. Yeah, this is, a, I think this is a larger debate that needs to be taken up by so, uh, society itself. Yes. We need to be looking into these intricacies because it's easy to blame matrilineal. In fact, when you look at an alcoholic, an alcoholic will blame, blame matrilineal. So matrilineal has become the bad, the bad guy or the bad girl here. But anyway, we'll come to yes, that at some yes, other point. Yes. I want to ask you this very personal question. You were pursuing a career in academics and you were doing very well. So what made you change track? You know, circumstances at that point of time. Firstly, we had a bereavement in the family where my father suddenly passed away at a very young age of 57 years old. And then there was this big gap that was 
that was created with the passing away of my father. Then my brother took over. And within two terms of his MLA ship, he also became very critically ill, where he could then not continue his political career or, as we say, it service to the people through the platform of politics. Mm -hmm. So when that gap arose, then again there was this, you know, conglomeration of ideas amongst citizens of the constituency that we now need to look for a new leader and uh, let's look for that leader once again from that same family. So this nepotism uh, continued and uh, that was one of the main reasons why I never took a Congress ticket because I, I, I didn't believe that the Congress ticket or the Congress party was just about Bar late Bob Peter Garnet Marvin Young's family. Mm -hmm. So we decided that if there was this pressure from the public for me to contest and leave everything away, I had worked so hard to succeed in my career as, a, as an educator, mm -hmm. completed my PhD through very difficult situations. In fact, I, I wasn't able to complete that also while I was in college. And uh, that was where, you know, there was this big pressure that, okay, you need to come, but then we need to make people understand that Congress does not belong to the family of Bob Peter. Mm -hmm. And that was going to make it very difficult for me to again come in into politics because this ready-made vote bank, so yes. to say, this ready-made love of the people for but this party it, through my father. you made it through that, huh? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. with great difficulty. So that was why we, at least I thought that I should never, I, sh I couldn't contest from the Congress then. So that was when I told people that I'm so sorry, the Congress already has a candidate and we shall not disturb with that arrangement because it was the arrangement that was decided by particip participants of the Congress party mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So I, I had told the people who came to meet me that I cannot do that. And anyways, I was taking a big risk, leaving my career. Mm -hmm. I had two young children. My elder daughter was just about seven and a half years. My younger child was just about two plus years. I was a single mom and I was really, really taking my destiny to its maximum risk. Okay. So that was what happened, yes. Okay. So as one of the very articulate women legislators and also being part of that uh, group in the assembly looking after women's welfare, uh, what do you think is uh, is the government doing to reduce poverty or elevate poverty amongst our tribal women folk, particularly the struggling single mothers and uh, the National Family Health Survey, uh, the latest one, number five, says that 41% of households in Meghalaya are run by single mothers. And I think this is, uh, this is really something that uh, has reduced women to a position of great subservience. They have children, they also have to go and work, they come back uh, and who knows what happens to their children in the daytime. Then most of these women cannot also support their children's education. So as a legislator, are you concerned about this? Have you pushed this agenda You know, for the government to be doing something specially to address the plight of single mothers? Um, if you remember, the Chief Minister's Special Assistance Scheme was a scheme that first operationalized in my constituency. How it was much, designed was, by us. How much do they get? How much? 500 per month. And but that's, that's but that's nothing. Well, no? at that point of time, when the... when the, when Has the, that amount been enhanced now? Not yet, not yet. But the chief minister scheme was a scheme that I had actually started operationalizing in my constituency. Okay. After my diligent uh, visits to families to understand how do I break up the MLA funds that come to me for assistance to the people of the constituency. So would one you, of the first you, things would, that I did... You, since you also are good with statistics, do you have statistics of how many single mothers there are in your constituency? We do have uh, statistics of single mothers mm -hmm. in my constituency and you will not believe it. 
we would be surprised to know that maybe one out of every four homes is run by a single mother. Mm -hmm. And if you are targeting um, 4,000 plus to 5,000 homes, minus the floating population, you'll be amazed, you'll be shocked to know that single mothers are really struggling. And it is true, what you're saying is very true, that most of these women uh, actually uh, lock up their kids. I myself have been witness to that. There were so many accidents also, also that happened in my constituency when working moms had to lock up their kids. Very sad, very pathetic situations. So we have again decided that we should focus very, very, uh, uh, you know, very co 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 coherently mm -hmm. on, on, on how to ensure that every child in my constituency goes to school. Mm -hmm. And post-COVID especially, this was a big challenge in my constituency where I was literally going door to door to ensure that every child went back to school. Mm -hmm. And I am quite confident that in my constituency, we have managed to ensure that even if livelihoods of women, whether single or married, are compromised because of the difficulties of that entire period, we had to send these kids back mm -hmm. to school. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I believe that if every legislator zeroed down on issues within their own constituencies and addressed them accurately, I don't think that this burden won't be so cumbersome for the entire government. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we're doing in a big way is that mm -hmm. we are ensuring that there is a impetus on self-employment. Okay. We've started a lot of kiosks, started a lot of small, small markets. We've built up a lot of shops everywhere. And we've relo we are now designing a big relocation market uh, for even those who are hawkers on the road. So we, we are looking at all of these things now. See, these are the intricate difficulties of women in the state of Meghalaya. Yeah. Very difficult opportunity for education, unfortunately, is not available for all. all. Mm -hmm. And uh, tuitions are very expensive. So coaching programs for these uh, EWS families, again, is something which we need to focus on very, very, uh, you know, concertedly so that there, this whole hand-holding, you know, will begin from, mm -hmm. from ground zero. Okay. So you have served as Parliamentary Secretary Education yes. and also as Education Minister. Why do you think tribal students f still find it difficult to compete on a level playing field? And you can see this from the resistance to the uh, CUET. And uh, we find that now after NEET had come in, very few of our tribal students from Meghalaya are making it. See, it's not about systemic errors alone. It's also about mindsets of citizens. For some strange re reason, every parent would believe that their child is a non-performer if he doesn't become a graduate or if he doesn't continue to class 11, 12, despite the fact that there's a regular uh, display of inability to grasp academics even at the class 10 level. Mm -hmm. The moment a, a parent uh, sees the child having to go to a, 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 you know these, these uh, professional courses or going to these non-academic streams of careers, parents become very jittery. Parents feel that, oh gosh, where have I gone wrong? My child is going to be a complete failure in the community. He's not going to have the status that is required for him to have that status. See, for as long as we, the people of the Khasi Jayantiyagaru region, uh, have this in our minds and do not appreciate that every child is incapable of going the academic way, we're going to have this problem. We're going to have more and more failures. So uh, this, is, have this, this is issue. where skill development comes in. This is where vocational education comes in. But how prepared is Meghalaya for this uh, whole thing, especially after the uh, new education policy will be implemented in full form? 
uh, it might be difficult for institutions to create that atmosphere for um, for for work vocational for vocation. studies. Yeah. See, any systemic change, overhauling of a system will entail a lot of confusion. But this confusion with a lot of patience and a lot of design, a lot of focus, a lot think, of care. Don't will you think there's, down. there's need for an education commission of some kind to, to at least provide the roadmap? I think that the NEP leaves very little scope for states to further their own little models and plans. You see, there is this federal structure in the in the in the country which is not being respected okay. so education so, being a state subject yes. i think the nep should have evolved first from within our states yes. where we could have been allowed to design curriculums mm. design a focus but now you have this complete bureaucratic um, control so to say and this is where things are going wrong and I wish they would trust the states more. I wish that they would enhance uh, 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 funding patterns to mm -hmm. states which are economically uh, resource poor like the state of Meghalaya. Because here is this huge population of under 40 mm -hmm. that the state of Meghalaya will have to deal with in the coming years. See, the, the BJP government dismantled the planning commission because it says that a one-shoe-fits-all policy doesn't work. It is very true. What you're saying just now is all the states need to have a nuance to their education system. We all have different skills and the skills that are going to be imposed on us may not necessarily be our strengths. Correct. Right? Correct. So. But then on the one hand, you do away with the planning commission, but then you bring the NITI IO. Yes. Now, it's Isn't same, that as bureaucratic yeah, with yeah. all the baggages that, that mm -hmm. we have seen happening in the planning uh, commission anyways? Mm -hmm. So I would believe that the, the, the consistency at which matters dealing with population are not dabbled politically because then that is going to completely uh, disarray the entire system. Actually, if you look at our education system today in Meghalaya, it seems to me that it is in a mess. Otherwise, why would you have teachers sitting on strike for so many days and uh, the issues are not resolved yet? And then if you look at employability, many of the, our graduates are roaming around without a job. So is the education system at fault? What is really at fault? I think it's the family first. Like I, I reiterate again, every mother and father should not have this impression that my child has dropped out after class 10, he's useless. When you look at all these first world countries, name the country. The country has a, a citizenry of all kinds of individuals. You have mechanics who are doing very well. You have uh, plumbers. plumbers who are doing very well. You have all these various, various demarcations of citizens as per their academic caliber. Mm -hmm. So now, whether we like it or not, we need to review this. See, teachers protesting. Unfortunately, it is a habit now. It is an age-old practice. Whenever leaders are elected in these bodies of these kinds of workforces of the government, there is going to be a high demand on them to try and pull some benefits during their tenures. Mm -hmm. So alongside this entire a teacher movement that you saw happening and evolving in the last few days, uh, we also need to review, I mean, what is the role of a managing committee? Uh, our managing committee is actually also assisting teachers because the original concept of an ad, ad hoc institution was that government didn't have money, could not adopt more schools other than the deficit pattern, and the government NP schools. So they said, okay, we don't have as much resources, but let us at least see whether we can help these, these, these kinds of institutions. So institutions were selected, but again, there is no review of these institutional performances. Mm -hmm. So we need to put in place a, a, a robust system that is going to be looking at all of these um, 
these 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 performance uh, uh, levels of institutions i'm told that there are still schools where enrollment is almost zero government goes and helps with the grant and aid whereas that school is actually not so you need doing a lot well of, you need a lot of streamlining streamlining which mm. can be done hand in hand with teachers involvement but why is it that the inspection is so weak when we were in school we had regular inspections by the government inspector of schools that system seems to have broken down we tried to revive it when i was the education minister in fact i tra- traveled extensively in the state i think i must have visited around 600 plus or 700 schools in that two years or 2.5 years that i was education minister but i was getting the feeling that people didn't like what i was doing okay. i i think they they found it a great people nuisance means, people means i mean when we go uh, collectively okay collectively everybody everybody was not was not uh, too happy with the fact that i, I was going nobody, randomly nobody likes to be held accountable no so that is something which i i i get that i got that impression Mm-hmm. and i realized that there were so many things that needed to be attended to but unfortunately okay of okay. uh, things went wrong and uh, it's okay and uh, okay. there was no ways that now let me could... come to a very important point and yes. that is the inner line permit yes what is your personal and political stand on that and along with that how long can meghalaya resist the railways all other north eastern capitals are now going to be connected by railways uh, parts of meghalaya mendi pathar is connected by railways and people in business feel that it will help them a lot so why the resistance to railways and why is government succumbing to the pressures from pressure groups see to me if you asked me personally uh, i was um, i am of the impression that some sort of a restriction for entry of other indians especially them settling down in my state is a very important agenda for me personally because really the dilution of our indigenous communities will be at high risk the but how no but how can they settle here when they can't buy land see we have seen that there has been a lot of inter marriages in our communities we we just have to come face to face with that reality so to me if you say ilp ilp prior to caa was not a very practical thing to do because we had other systems that could protect this 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 uh, this this um, community, community. Uh, structure of our own communities yeah you say that the land transfer act is a very stringent act but marriage again you see the, the binami there were other factors that were also spiraling because of these intermarriages that were occurring in our community but there are laws to deal with binami there are laws to deal with everything yeah but uh, unfortunately the most important thing is if somebody is coming to my state see i have been to other north eastern states i've been to nagaland i have been to mizoram i have been to i've not been to manipur post ilp implementation but these states where there was this implementation of the ilp there was a substantial protection of the indigenous communities mm-hmm. see we can't just sit in shillong and say i'm pro or anti ilp we need to build case studies mm-hmm. i mean did tourism as an industry go wrong in mizoram i don't think so did it go wrong in nagaland i don't think so well you so don't what have is this no, you don't have that many footfall in nagaland or mizoram as you have in meghalaya see this is something which we believe but while i was in those states for various programs in my discharge of duty for the state of meghalaya whether for the government or for the legislative assembly i i i i beg to differ because there were many festivals that were very popular in nagaland many community activities in mizoram that attracted 
a huge footfall on on tourism indexes as well so i i feel that we can't just say are you pro or anti ilp see in the event of cea being implemented in the state of meghalaya maybe it is necessary to have some sort of a buffer mm-hmm. because large you may say that a very small area the normal area is 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 out of the purview of the six schedule areas and caa is operational those are the areas where we need to be very cautious because a lot of those areas actually fall in my constituency so, so i travel to every household mm-hmm. okay. and i can see that um, maybe it will be good in the long run mm-hmm. if you have some sort of a scrutiny because every state who has implemented ilp has implemented it as per the state's requirement you know there are different models of the ilp it's not like ilp means no more tourists that's also not true it's just that when you go look at bhutan a beautiful country no the thing they is they have an ilp like system even the, in bhutan no, the problem is the fall is very high the problem is of youth not being employed enough in this state because industry doesn't want to come in even the it industry would think twice if you had to have this ilp in place but anyway we have heard your views on ilp let's come to the railways but can i just also betray mm-hmm. go to bhutan and see how they are working what in bhutan is inclusive they are very open country and there is an ilp operational in the state of in the country of bhutan they protected their indigenous communities excellently well so see it's not straight lines railway now the topography of the state of meghalaya will anyways make it very difficult for railways to be operational in a very high hilly areas no but we have the technology for all that now i there think is, there, there is sufficient uh, which evidence. state which state have you seen that kind of a technology no, i i that, i have gone not, to let's not i have gone states. to chandigarh i have gone to shimla i've gone through that road i've been on that train that train remains just that train okay so now the only areas where i am seeing that no, the but, railways but what can what should why should an a train be prevented from coming up to bernihat or up to nongpo for now, instance now because there is this resistance amongst the population who have this unknown fear self self understood fear let's make a study of bernihat i sorry let's make a study of mendi i am told that the garo communities are benefiting substantially because of that railway line going all the way to mendi so if there is this resistance and this fear then maybe we should start organizing uh, groups of individuals who are resisting the coming of the railway to bernihat let's take them there let's also, take them to also, to, to gohati think, station also i think there is need for a societal debate on this why should just one pressure group have its say it's not that just one pressure group is having a say it's just that other people's other groups are too scared to speak should that be the case so that is what so but i believe one thing don't push anything to a community until it's ready because you're playing with fire but how do you communities how have do you to make, be receptive how do you make the community ready it's 50 years now when will the community be ready so let's begin to talk about the good stories that are happening in 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 mendi i mean how are the things happening there has there been a huge problem of influx have the local communities of garo hills uh, uh, benefited from that mm-hmm. from that railway track all the way to mendi mm-hmm. so we should have these case studies made and we should share information mm-hmm. so that whatever misconception or any kind of a conception of the public is first clarified but i i don't think it would be fair because if you ask me i've been to shimla that that train remains just that one train i've been to darjeeling that one train remains just one train i mean i've not seen i mean in kashmir uh, the lower lying areas have a good network of uh, of 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 railways the trains are now going to mizoram 
uh, which part of Mizoram again? Because the hilly yeah. areas again. No, but whatever part, at uh, least partly it will be there. Anyway, let's come back to another very, very interesting topic which the public would really like to hear. Uh, what about the perception that you are supporting a government that's mired in scams? See, come, uh, governments will come, governments will go. And the anti-incumbent factor will always be the biggest challenge of any government in office. Scams are not something new. Scams are allegations which need to be verified. Well, there have been inquiry committees. The government hasn't made the inquiry public, the findings public rather. Uh, this government has pre pretty much everyone on its bench other than the erstwhile Congress and then now the TMC. So, if you're talking about that, uh, talking about the fact that this government is uh, scam ridden, then I think all coalition partners are to be equally made responsible. Sure, sure. Because even in the past, we've seen that there is this allegation again and again that no, the surfaces. Is, it, it is the that full MDA. It, it cannot be, you know, lumped on one party. It yeah. is a coalition government. So everyone has to take the blame equally. Everyone has to take the blame but equally. But let me ask you one question. How do you rate uh, Conrad Sangma on a scale of 1 to 10? I would say about 7 or 8. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say 7 or 8. Mm -hmm. So you'd still like to see him coming back as Chief Minister or do you have ambitions of becoming Meghalaya's first woman Chief Minister? Never. It has never occurred to me also. Politics is also very male-dominated. No man is going to allow any woman to rise to that. Seat. For so sure. you realize that? Oh yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, for sure. The drama, the entire drama in the Congress party, the very process of us getting, uh, you know, shooed away and expel and, and not even expelled, suspended, uh, you know, is something which hovers around the fact that likely because I'm a woman and I'm one mm -hmm. of the senior most members of that party, but it so, doesn't really so matter. So how do you see yourself or where do you see yourself in 2023? Firstly, I should work hard in my constituency to ensure that I, my, the, Do you have my stiff public opposition report, there? Do you have uh, stiff opposition there? Elections are elections. We should never undermine any opponent. We should work hard. I hope first to win the elections. And then I hope to get into government. Which party? Um, I've not taken a call because in my case, I visit homes. I know my people by name. Every voter, I would know either by his parental which, name or by his also, own name. That was what your father used to yes. practice. Yes. So does it mean then that your constituents will vote for you no matter which party you are in? I should not be so bold about saying that. But definitely, um, I am fielding myself as a candidate. Mm -hmm. Which party will I go to? We have time. See. We, we must not forget that in 2008, I won from the UDP seat. 2013, nobody was going to give me that ticket because 16 East also had another, another very serious, uh, senior member from the same party. I knew that I would be pushed away. The so I exited now, myself. No, the senior member now has shifted uh, place. So uh, are you going I wish back that to that, that was done. I, I wish that that was done then. I wish that that was done then because I had seen when you when you evaluate post delimitation which constituency you would have a better chance of winning you need to look at the the real numbers the real facts that are there in the field So are we seeing Amparin back in the UDP I will have to discuss this with my people mm. or But NPP. more or less you know we see that people want no, to see But what's your preference UDP NPP I still don't have a preference. I'm leaving it open. Options are very open. I mean, why would it only be UDP and PP? It could be any other party also. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in eight, you mustn't forget that when I knew 13 ticket was not coming to me and president's rule came, 
I went back to the people from the front door mm-hmm. and I re-entered my position from the front door. Uh, short, too short a time now for me to go back to the field for elections because we have elections just after February. That would be about nine to ten months. Yes. I did not see the need for me to get into an election and then again election. So I will remain in the Congress till 2020. Okay. Two till the end of my term. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, the Congress wants to do something else. That's up to them. Uh, thank God I didn't leave the Congress and they booed me out. <laughs> thank God. Because yeah. leaving parties is, is a big baggage. Yes, it is. Thank you so much, uh, Kong Amparin, for speaking to us so candidly. Thank you. I don't think uh, we've had any legislator speaking to us with such frankness. Yes. We wish you all the best thank and uh, we hope you're able to come back from whichever party you contest from. So viewers, we've just heard Kong Amparin Lingdo uh, outlining her future political career, speak about her experiences as a Minister for Urban Affairs, Minister for Education. I think it's been quite a learning for us and I hope it has been a learning for you listeners also. Thank you very much. Until the next time.